So it all started on a Friday night in San Francisco, and I was out with a couple of friends, and one of them said, come on, let's skip, and went leaping down the street in front of me. As I followed him, I couldn't believe how exhilarating it was. I hadn't skipped since I was a kid and thought it had to be great physical exercise, and a vision of starting a worldwide skipping movement danced through my head. I made that vision a reality in 1999 when I created the iSkip.com website and started organizing group happy hour skips in San Francisco. When the Chronicle caught wind of what I was up to and published this article called She'd Like to Teach the World to Skip, it kick-started a national media phenomenon with Time, Newsweek, People, USA Today all doing stories about the skipping movement, which allowed me to recruit head skippers in 70 cities around the world to help me further my cause. When People Magazine did this article, a major literary agent offered to represent me and I made the bold decision to quit my day job to focus on the skipping movement full time and to write a book. <laughs> to make a long story three minutes short, let me just say that that didn't go so well and I ended up skipping myself into financial ruin. <laughs> so thus began what I've come to know as the acute post-skipping hangover phase of my story. It's one thing when the world, everything's going your way to skip, and another altogether when it feels like your dreams are crumbling all around you. But no matter how dark those times got, the skipping story never let me go. Whenever I thought it was over, I'd hear from a skipper who was creating their own special brand of skipping magic, like a Shreda Furman, who skipped a marathon and also set a Guinness World Record for skipping the fastest 5K. Or the women in Toronto who organized Skipping Up and Down the Street Day through Facebook that's happened now three years in a row every July 31st. I didn't do very much skipping myself during these challenging times, but that all changed about nine months ago when a video of a skipper from the 1980s named Bill Martinelli went viral on YouTube. As it turns out, Bill and I had skipped very parallel paths, only his had happened 20 years before when there wasn't an internet. And when I saw him, and his passion for skipping on that video, it rekindled something deep within me, and I remember just how powerful and underutilized a tool skipping is as far as lifting our spirits, getting in shape, and making the world around us a much happier place to be. And so, inspired by Bill, I started skipping again about six months ago up in Marin without very much fanfare, and I was skipping on the treadmill at the Y, just kind of minding my own skipping business. And then Kara contacts me and asks me to be a part of this, and it felt like it might be meant to be. It's really fun to imagine where the skipping movement could go next with a video behind it from storytellers from Good Behind It. And I would love the opportunity to work with her. If the, if the world responded to the skipping like they did in the 80s and again in the 90s, and the national media too, I think they would do it again. And I would love to work with storytellers for good to make the world a happier place one skip at a time. Skip on!